G'day legends and uh, welcome to another video of Fin to Fin Aquariums. Uh, just going to do a little update on the room plans. As you can see it is pretty much full in here now. Uh, there isn't much room to do anything in here without cramming things up even more. Which I do not want to do. So the plan has always been to swing around to my little room that was uh, on the end here I've took chopped off a bit of wall here which I did months ago and then I was just piling that room up with rubbish but I've started cleaning it out um, so the plan is this is obviously going to get lined with insulation which I've got the insulation there so the plan is I'll run that all around run it over the ceiling and then uh, I'll be putting uh, the plan is to have at this stage, I do change my mind a lot, but six four foot tanks across here. Um, I've measured it, they fit easy. Um, so, I don't want to put too much in here. But uh, six four footers at this stage. And then I am thinking, just on this little wall here, uh, a little stand of some kind for shrimp only just to muck around with maybe a dozen tanks for a few different varieties of shrimp to get them out of the other room. And this room's a little bit cooler as well, so it might be good. So yeah, that's that's the plan for this room. So I'll get, get the six four-footers in here. I'll probably end up jamming something else in here, but who knows. We'll uh, play it by ear, uh, and then we'll, we'll go from there, so. That's the plan on the expansion for this stage, who knows, something might end up on this side too, although I've got the power boards and everything up here, so there will be space here, but uh, it might be maybe a tank on a stand or something in the corner, just to, who knows, I truly don't know yet, but we'll work it out, but that's going to be happening, I'll start uh, putting the lining up this weekend, get a few days off of work, so hopefully find some motivation and uh, get this little room started so that's the plan there I will uh, come in and just do an update on the fish room so I'll just start over here on this rack so as you know my last few videos I had done were all about breeding fish for profit so that is how I'm trying to set myself up so nothing's really changed here obviously got a heap of young fish growing up I would really like the four foot tanks for so they grow a bit quicker but I do have some breeding pairs in these so I've got my albino crebensis in here the male's just hanging out up here he was getting a bit fired up before so I was carrying on a little bit I'm not sure the girl's hiding behind the filter at the back I reckon but uh, so we'll keep an eye on them not the hardest of fish to breed, I've found, but still nice. I do have another pair of them down here. And the girl has been in there. She's cleaned all that up in the cave there. She's got it all neat and tidy, so I don't think we'll be that far away from getting eggs from that pair of albinos. And then, of course, my normal crebensis down here took the cave out but yeah obviously a heap of babies counted 30 odd in there and they'll probably go again if I put the cave back in there I would say but uh, for now I'll leave it out and uh, we'll work out what we want to do other than that obviously lots of pineapple saw tails this group of firecracker saw tails this is what I want one of the four foot tanks for I was going to put these along with my adults up there all in one tank and just have a big four footer full of albino firecrackers I thought that would look pretty cool and then uh, if I want babies I'll just take the females out uh, put them in a tub and try and do it that way or drop them in one of the outdoor ponds in summer obviously because I know that works so that's the plan with them moving forward because these here it's really hard to get a good healthy fish when you order them I've ordered these all online I have not found them locally or in Adelaide when I've gone there but if I've ordered probably 40 online I've 
probably only had a good 20 to survive. Uh, they just don't really do well. They don't really come in great condition when you get them. They're quite skinny, they're small. Well, obviously a few are rocking up dead. But they just haven't been great. Seem to have got this little lot going okay and there's some really good healthy ones in there. And obviously my adults, so there's only six or seven up there but they're going really well and you'll see them after. But I have had quite a few people message me say they struggle with these. And just getting healthy ones. So I'm hopeful to breed a few and be able to supply them instead of being imported in. Uh, be able to supply some homebred fish, I guess you could call it. Uh, that you guarantee they're going to be of good health and, and not sell them until they're a good size and just, you know, overall going really well. So that's the plan with them. Um, we do have a few other things. My Daisy Blue Rice fish have bred heaps. These are just ones I've caught out of the pond. There's still a heap out in the pond to catch. So, no issues with them. Obviously, you know, I've got plenty of quarries. My Pistagrama, Pandoro, I've dropped a cave in there. And I think the male's in the cave now. So he'll just have to work on that girl and try and get her in there, I guess, at some stage. Um, the red cobra guppies are going all right. A few babies in there. So they seem to be going okay. Starting to look nice. Uh, obviously more quarries, so forth. Do have my tiger platties, which have uh, bred quite a few. Got some driftwood in here for some uh, bristle nose fry. So the water's got a bit of tannin in it at the moment, so it's a bit discoloured, but it's all right. So they're going well. And down the bottom, obviously, I've got always my shrimp. Yellow shrimp in there. I don't know if I've lost a few. I seem to have more numbers. I've not really put a lot of time into the shrimp, so I need to get back on that. Hence why I was thinking of building a specific rack in the other room to separate the shrimp from these tanks, because I wanted to use these tanks for breeding like individual pairs of certain types of fish. So that's something I'll be doing as we move forward. The uh, Amazon theme tank, this hasn't really progressed. I ended up dropping things in there to make room. I might just uh, pause it for a second, turn some lights off because it's a bit glary. So I've just turned a few lights off so you might be able to actually see some fish. Uh, these are the first where I've started taking gravel out, as I said in the last video. I still haven't done any more because I've been at work all week, so not a lot has changed here. Got my little red guppies down here growing up. They've got future breeders, I guess. These tanks are got the substrate out the bottom, so very easy to clean. This one's got the uh, red lace antlers, which are probably one of my favourite antlers. Really nice, pretty awesome. There is some L397 plicos in there. There's one in the cave. One thing I've noticed without the gravel, it's a bit easier to find the fish. So, actually starting to see them a bit more. They stand out a bit more, which is good. There's more uh, red lace endlers in there. Peppered quarries, which I've never bred the peppered quarries. But uh, there was angel fish in there, so it's fair to say any eggs will be eaten pretty quick. Obviously my albino bristle nose breeders and some uh, Flatties in that tank. Now I do have some of my young albino firecrackers in here growing up. So bred a few. Did lose a few as well, they're just not not super strong, but as you can see, some of them are getting to a good size. Starting to look good. So there's a couple in there that aren't albino firecrackers. You can see the colour's just not more of an orange. The firecrackers you can stand out obviously with the red. So that's the plan, there's the adults there. Once I put them outside in the outdoor tubs they just they're just so much healthier. So obviously they've had to come in because the weather's getting cold but they're really healthy so keep them like that till next season. And go outside again. And standard blue platties and long fin bristle nose in here. So, 
everything's going alright. Not too much has changed here. It's pretty much, these are relatively new. Uh, Silverado Endless. So I think there's three males. About four females in here. So I haven't seen any fry yet, but give it time. If they're like any of the other endlers I've had, they'll, they'll definitely breed, but very similar to the black bars with the back tail, but obviously the silver at the front. But they're pretty cool. And obviously my blue-eyed lemon crystal nose in here somewhere. They'll be all hiding around under there. Which I've bred a couple of times now. I haven't had a lot of success raising the fry. And I need to get these guys some marble bristle nose into a tank now and some uh, long fin common bristle nose they need to get into a tank as well just been very slack uh, the German white guppies as we know these things are bred extremely well adults are getting on a bit now so you can tell they're losing their colour and the fin there the males starting to drop off a bit so but uh, they've done a good job setting that colony up. Plenty of young ones. They're off and running. No issues there. Obviously the super red bristle nose and golden koi guppies in here. They're all going well. You know, I haven't never bred the super reds, but they're starting to get some size to them, so I don't think it'll be too long. Uh, yellow guppies in there, we won't get too excited about that. And some peppermint bristle nose tucked away in there. I'll have to check those caves. I don't think they've got eggs, but you never know. Could be lucky. Be something I'll check after for sure. We'll get the torch. Uh, platties and bristle nose uh, stuff that's just for sale. They've got to come out. As like I said, if I'm going to be breeding for profit, this tank needs to have something in it. Well, a couple of things in it that I'm actually breeding, not growing out. The grow outs need to go in the tubs behind me in these middle rows. And these need to be, the 24 two foot tanks need to be for breeding. Otherwise, it's fair to say the breeding for profit, profit's probably not going to work that well. But, uh, and obviously I've got these, there's a couple of 50 centimetre tanks there, and even small ones. But the small ones are going to be for the uh, better fish. So I'm going to order three or four females, three or four really nice males, and then just let them s settle for a while, and then I'll might try and do some breeding and experiment a bit with the better fish. So that's one of the plans there. Now the tub's down the middle. It's got a lot of fry and stuff in it. Some albino Corydoras, which we've bred lots. Oh, there's a few. Angel fish were fighting a bit, so I separated a few. Just yellow guppies in there. Now, this one's got a lot of blue mystery snails. This one down here is full of red guppies. So, just fry. There's the females in here still, but there's fry everywhere. So these ones will get grown up to sell. They don't need to keep this lot. I've kept the first lot to, to grow up, so. The reds, there's no males left, I've only got females. But they've kept having fry, so I haven't needed the males. I'll get some out of the first lot. Uh, not much in those tanks, just a few strays. Nothing to get too carried away about. Uh, purple cobra guppies in here, I think. So they'll come into a tank at some stage. I think I've only got one male left. Three females and one fry, so. Haven't had a lot of success with these. Hopefully uh, the girls drop something soon, you know, before I lose, lose any. Get that first generation out, then I'll be off and running. Until I get them, you just never know. They could be gone before you know it. Uh, golden mystery snails and blue mystery snails. Golden mystery snails. More albino Corydoras. I haven't even been collecting eggs for them for a while now because I've had heaps. Uh, there was guppies in here, but I've moved them on. And there's one that I missed. It's still in there, obviously. Uh, my blue 
uh, neon blue guppies. These will come into a tank as well because they're, they're too nice to be hidden away down here. Males are quite spectacular in these. Really nice. Always nice to look at. The males. There's a young, nice young one there. You can see. I'm not doing a good job of you filming with one end trying to catch them, so I'll stop. But, uh, uh, random guppies in this one, just a mixture. There's all sorts in there, to be honest. There is some nice ones, though. So the colours through the tubs don't look as good, but it's okay. They've even had babies in here as well, so. I'll uh, pick out what I want to keep and uh, put them aside. So next year when I do the outdoor tubbing for summer, I'll put the colours that I want together and make some nice mixed guppies. These two tubs, not much in there. They did have some fish in there, but these two tubs crashed and parameters went through the roof and a few fish died so I've got to empty them out do a few wood changes I'll get them back on track and so I haven't done too much with them there but a bit of weed growing in it and all that tough stuff so they're still going I just got to do some work there to to get them back on track yeah, unfortunately they're the only two tubs I've had trouble with everything else has been really good so over to the last row, I might start at the end, just to mix it up a bit. So these are my blue topaz guppies, so I've been wanting these for quite some time. And then uh, finally got some, so I think there's two, maybe three males in there. They're all pretty young, there's one bit bigger female, but they are generally all young animals young fish I should say and there's about six or seven females so and there is one fry in there because there is one really big girl I'm pretty sure she had a baby so it hopefully has a few more so these are probably one of my favorites if not my favorites and now I've seen them their colors will only get better as they get a bit bigger they're only small but uh, the males are awesome the blues look pretty wicked so hopefully you can set up a good colony of these so the plan with the guppies is to get some better ones I've got a lot of bits and pieces I guess that aren't that don't, no, don't all breed true not the best but, uh, so I do plan on buying some really good ones over time this is just the mixed guppies that I brought in from the outdoor tub Plenty of colours in there, dark colours, light colours, mainly yellows and blues, so I need to mix some reds and, and other colours into that group if, if they're going to stay and be used next summer. Uh, my blue jet endlers or blue star endlers, if you want to call them, obviously started with like five females, so Fair to say they've bred, there's plenty of fry in here still, quite small, and my half beaks are in here. I thought the other day I might have seen a baby half beak, but I'm not sure if I did. If I did, I didn't even, never seen it again, so I don't know if he got picked off sitting on the top, but there's plenty of real tiny fry for the uh, antlers in here, so I'd like to think and if the half beaks did have babies, they'd survive, but is there a live bearer? So they just sit on top like that. So they're pretty cool. But at this stage, nothing that I can be sure of. Uh, this tank's just got some endlers that have got to get moved out. Black bars. Uh, and I just threw all the snails in here because they were just annoying me, actually. I get a bit annoyed when I'm going to have lids on all the tanks sometimes. Snails are still finding a way out through the little gap in the corner, and so the ivories, the blues, um, the goldens are all in here, and anything else I've got. Just, uh, yep, that was it. No, oh, there's still a few of these ones around. I'll do so in that other tank as well. Uh, the blue Moscow guppies going strong as always 
So that needs to do a bit of water change in this one. And there's the giant male peppermint just screws back there. He's an absolute monster. Hope to get a nice big female for him one day. Be pretty good. And the next tank is just some Japanese blue endlers. They're just some young ones that was growing up. So they'll be breeding before you know it. Nothing super exciting. Uh, just some more grow out. Again, these fish have got to get out of here because I want to have fish in here breeding. I'm not going to do much breeding for profit when your breeding tanks have got grow outs in them. So I really do need to sell some fish and get some tanks sorted, get the gravel out, like I've said in previous videos, which I will do. Uh, my little breeding group of Julii. Most of these are young ones growing up, but there was four or five adults that have done all the breeding. They are still in there, obviously, and I've left a heap of babies in there to grow up. So there's only Julii in there, but I will put another fish in here as well. Uh, something to swim around the middle top levels and try to breed it, obviously. Uh, platies that come in from the outdoor pond. Plenty of them. I always keep a few types of platies, they're always colourful, they're always moving, they always look pretty cool. A few uh, mystery snails in there. But, uh, these platies have come inside and still breeding in here. There's always little babies around. Uh, the next tank I had a little bit of a disaster with my blue metal laces, which were one of my favourites, so um, I lost the adults. Uh, there is some babies that survived, so they're growing up. So my only hope now is to get the four or five that are in here up to size. I did lose quite a few fry as well. I was actually treating this tank. I put some weed in here from in the outdoor ponds and usually when I do that I treat for any uh, fungal diseases and things like that. So I put some stuff in here and I do it with all the tanks. And I come home from work on my lunch break and I thought oh, I better treat that tank. I didn't even think, I just looked at the container dropped the dose in, went to work, but when I come back, it, that's not what I put in here. I dropped the, the chlorinator stuff in here, so I overloaded that and crashed the tank a bit. And it's the only thing I can think of as to why they all kind of died. So the Corydoras didn't, nothing else did. It was just the actual four adults that were in here died for the guppies. But uh, yeah, nothing else. Everything else seemed to go alright, but so I can only assume that, that might have done the job, but who knows really. It's, uh, it's just a, a thought. But uh, orange guppies down here, going alright. Again, do have a lot of just plain, pretty standard type guppies, so these I'm thinking would probably just go well with the mixed guppies, then they're, they're not. The males are quite nice, but not, it's not like they're going to sell for any more than just the normal guppies, so do I need to have them separate? Probably not, I could probably have something else there, I think. And of course my tank with all the endless, which needs a water change as well. Put some driftwood in there, and that's uh, got the tannin going in that water as well. Got water changes this weekend, so I'll get on top of that. Gravel's got to come out as it is with all of them. Sell a few, I have sold a few, but this you wouldn't know it. There's ridiculous amounts in there. But uh, other than that, the fish room is going all right. So they've got a few lights up now, because while I'm filming, if I turn this other side off, it seems to take the glare away a bit each time, so. Uh, I'm not sure if this tank's even gonna stay as it is yet. I've got so many things going through my head. But yeah, that's uh, that's where we're at. The main project before I even get the gravel out and do all that other stuff is this room. Desperate to get this lined just to uh, help with the temperatures and so forth. So yeah, that, that's the main goal. And of course, I'll hit the 1K on subscribers. So uh, thanks to all the legends that have subscribed. It's uh, pretty awesome. So I actually didn't think I'd ever get there to be honest. My uh, videos are not exactly of the highest quality, but 
it is what it is. But thanks to everyone that subscribed and everyone that comments, everyone that likes it. Uh, plenty of people share it. Uh, I get plenty of good comments too, good advice and great ideas. So keep that up, everyone. I, I uh, always make sure I try to reply to everyone. And uh, yeah, so that's good fun. So thanks, everyone. So yeah, please, if you're watching this, please subscribe, like, share, comment. And uh, yeah, it is appreciated as uh, I do get plenty of support from from a lot of people, so muchly appreciated. Oh, on one last note before I go, I was, I've been trialling these foods. So I've got the uh, fish frenzy. I ordered this bag. This was, uh, I reckon it's the small stuff, the smallest you can get. So 0.5 mil. So everything seems to like that. That's really good, find that excellent for all the guppies. I fed it to everything, so it's it's been brilliant. And I'm a few days into the trial with the bug buffet, which I'm finding really good as well. Um, you can mix that up, so that that does the fry, like small fry, eating that along with adults, and uh, you can mix it up in the water and make it really fine, or you can, you know, put it in so it's a little bit bigger pieces. Sinks to the bottom, and the same as this green cuisine, this is like sinks to the bottom for your bristle nose. I've found the Corydoras like it, the fish eat it, the shrimp eat it, everything that's actually eating it. The only thing I've found is if I've got gravel in the tanks, it sinks down and just goes in amongst the gravel. So obviously I'm taking the gravel out of my tanks, so these food, so this food will be perfect. So the tanks that I've fed this in um, with the bare bottoms uh, they just they just clean it all up and the same as the bug buffet what the fish don't eat at the top and in the middle gets to the bottom and then uh, all the bottom dwelling fish come in and clean it up so nothing gets left over unless you overfeed obviously I'll try to underfeed more than overfeed if that makes sense because uh, uh, it doesn't take much to crash a tank when you're overfeeding so all three of these I can I would highly recommend at the moment. Like I said, I'm only this one here I've been using for a little while now. And for bang for buck for money, this is probably the best one because this bag well, I think was cheaper than the little bag of um, bug buffet and green cuisine. Oh, there's heaps in here, but it's a different type of food too, so uh, different purposes for all three of them obviously, but if you're looking for variety, uh, I would actually recommend all three, they're actually really good. Um, so I can't remember what they cost off the top of my head. Uh, I had to freight all of them in. These guys were really good, the freight was next to nothing. These ones the freight was actually a bit uh, quite expensive. I don't know why, because they're only like weight wise, there's not much to them. They're 150 gram bags and the, the freight was nearly as dear as the food. And this one was 500 gram, heavier than both of them, yet yeah, freight was a quarter of the price, so there you go. But yeah, all, all three are, are brilliant, so I do recommend get on the internet and order them. This one, just type in your fish frenzy and you can get that one. Uh, these ones are Keeping Fish Simple, so I'm sure you have watched his YouTube channel, but yeah, good product, um, well worth using it, so. But other than that, everyone, Thanks for the support, and hopefully the next video, hopefully this room's lined, and uh, I can show you the progress. Uh, at this stage, I'm planning to do it this weekend, but my plans can change pretty quickly, but we'll see what happens. Uh, I might do a video on the outdoor tubs, but I have emptied most of them, so there's not much to do out there. Um, really, probably wouldn't, not really worth doing a video through winter out there so it'll be just in the fish room uh, the focus getting the expansion done so anyway legends i'll let you go have a great weekend and uh yeah cheers for the support gotcha